Hi, I'm Avi Pollock. I'm head of uh, innovation at Royal Bank. Um, I'll tell you a bit about me first. So, uh, those are my kids playing a little guitar here on my 50 inch uh, TV. Um, I like that. Uh, so, I'm from Toronto. Uh, I did a, a law MBA program, so I graduated uh, in 96 from the law MBA program. Um, while I was at school, I started an internet company in 94, so pretty early, actually closer to 93. Um, starting a, I started an internet company basically doing you know, technology consulting, helping companies figure out what, what this internet thing is and how you start to use it. It was a lot of fun because it was pretty early days and you knew more than almost anybody because the, not many people knew much of anything. We actually sold, I had a friend of mine who, um, a friend of mine and I started these, this internet access package for, for York University students. And we basically just, there was no, at the time, high, no, there was no high speed access to get on the internet. At the time it was uh, 288, moving to 56 soon. Um, but no one knew how to access it. There was no tech support. There was no, you know, you plug in and it works. It was actually, you had to configure the dialer if you knew how in order to make it work. Um, so fr my friends hooked, put me on the internet in 93, thought this was cool. Um, put our friends on too and we said, why don't we sell this? So we actually created the internet access package for York students. We bundled a book with it. I called up, uh, at the time, I called up Netscape. They were in their point oh, you know, point 0.8 version. Spoke to the, like, some senior VP there and said, hey, do you mind if I use your product in my, uh, in my software? We're giving it to students. Sure, go ahead. And sold, like, you know, about five or 600 of these on campus. Um, packaged them with modems, packaged it with an internet tour guide book, and then we started an internet business. So I made the decision at that time not to do law. So I was actually the first person at the time in the history of our, the law MBA program not to actually go in article and practice law um, because I thought this internet thing was going to be a bit bigger. So I thought that was, you know, I stand by my decision. Um, so I, I started an internet business and then um, we got acquired basically by a company called North American Media Engines. Um, I joined the company when it was about 15 people. I was their first non-technical hire. So I'm sufficiently technical to be dangerous, but I'm not a programmer. Um, so they hired, you know, I, was, I headed up their sales, their marketing side, um, and then I eventually took over the sales side of the business, grew it from about 2 million to 30 uh, million, um, to help take it public, sell it out to a public company. I was president of the operating division by that time that came through. Um, got to ride sort of the dot-com wave up, so, you know, our stock price was through the roof, and on paper we were all worth lots of money. Um, on paper, um, and then we got bought another time, a second time by another company who basically spent through our 40 or 50 million dollars we had in cash and put everyone out of business in about 180 days, 150 days, and everyone was, the companies were all gone. So that was kind of an exciting up and down ride of the dot com days uh, in 30 seconds or less. Um, so after that, when that crashed in 2001, I went and consulted to startups for a bunch of years. I did a job in Europe uh, helping a company from here expand into a CRM consulting company, expand their business to Europe, and basically did for, I used to do 10 days, five countries a week home. 10 days, three to five countries a week home. And I never actually knew where I was waking up, so it was kind of an interesting experience. Uh, it was actually a great experience. Um, I worked for a security company for a while as well that did, um, in the US, helping them do their acquisition strategy, so I did a lot of acquisition work. Um, so helped them with their acquisition strategy. They did not technology security, they were doing homeland security. So these guys did, for example, the, um, this, was, uh, this was the last, they were doing the security for the, last, for the Republican uh, convention uh, in 2004. So kind of cool, lot, learned a lot about things that I didn't think I'd ever know about, like Navy SEALs going in to protect CEOs in foreign countries, it was kind of interesting. Um, so I did a lot of work with different startups and then I finally, one of my mentors said to me, you know, why don't you go get a real job for a change? And I said, no, I'm not really uh, going to go work, you know, I'm not really going to go work for a big company, it's not my thing. Uh, I'm an early startup guy. I started a couple of other companies along the way as well that I, some were good, some worked out well, some worked out less well. Um, but he said, you know, why don't you go get some big company experience? And I said, no, I don't think so. But he introduced me to the head of technology and operations, uh, global technology and operations for Royal Bank, and said, why don't you go talk to him? I said, sure, I'll go talk to him, but I'm never going to work at a bank. And, um, 
and I met with the, the, the head of global technology operations. He said, um, yeah, I don't know where you're fit for, but we've got this pocket, this innovation group that I think you'd be really interesting for. So I said, sure, I'll go find out more about it. Um, my wife also wanted me to have a job that actually has a paycheck that cashes every two weeks so I could feed my firstborn at the time. Um, <laughs> so I thought that was a good, so I thought that was a good strategy for a while. Um, so I joined RBC in 2004, about four and a half years ago now. Um, I've been heading up the innovation team at Royal Bank for, for about just over two years now. And uh, I'm actually taking on a bigger job at the bank. So the innovation role keeps growing. I was in the team. Then I headed up the technology side of the team. Then I've been heading the team. And uh, I'm also going to own all of IT strategy for the bank as well, which is, you know, if you can figure it out Royal Bank, IT strategy is pretty important because we don't have a bank without technology. So that's me in a little nutshell. And those are my two kids, my two boys. Saying, uh, they do like their guitar hero and rock band. So I, I always like to throw in some of these quotes because I think they're really interesting, right? So, you know, heavier than air flying machines are impossible. I think there's a world market for five computers. I mean, what it really likes is it says that like innovation is not a perfect science, right? It really is about trying to predict the future and find out ways to get there. And the truth is sometimes you get it wrong. And a lot of what our team does is we're there to figure out how do we look at things, how do we look at the future, and how do we erase some of that uncertainty by taking action. So I'll talk about some of the ways that we do that. And what I want to figure I'd cover off today is I'll tell you a bit about what my team does. Um, I'll talk to you a bit about how we do it and how the innovation program at the bank works because I'm going to guess that most of you probably don't think of a bank, first of all, as innovative or think of a bank, I'm sure, as having a team like the one I'm going to describe for you or even a, what our role do, is. And then I'm going to talk to you about some of the cool things that we do and that have, some of which have actually made it to market. So I think it's pretty neat. So one of the things about innovation is you've got to find a good definition, right? And you've got to find something that works with your specific company, right? So we're not Google, right? I'm not giving anyone 20% of their time. No, you don't get 20% of the time to go work on whatever you think is cool. Like we're a bank, right? So when you think about innovation, you've got to find a strategy that actually aligns to the kind of business you want to run, and the kind of company you have. So we came up with a division with a, with this um, with this uh, definition that innovation connects what's possible to what is valuable to our clients and our shareholders. Um, so it's the what is possible part's really important. So when we think about the technology side of things, it's got to be doable. So we're not looking at quantum computing. It's something we may keep the pulse on, but it, doesn't ex it just doesn't exist right now, right? We need to work on look at things that actually you can take to market today. I'm not thinking about banking in space, right? I'm thinking about things that are practical, but again, thinking of where the technology is going. It's not about what it can necessarily do today, but it's what can it really do for us and how can we start to move the ball towards it even if it's not perfect. Um, it also has to have value for our clients, right? If there's no value for our clients, if there's no business behind it, you know, we're just doing it for fun and that's, no one's going to keep paying the bills when we're just doing things for fun, right? Um, so, it's got, uh, so it's got to have a business model behind it. So it's got to be valuable for our shareholders, right? It's got to generate a return. Um, we really look at innovation as being a very broad, something new, right? And it doesn't have to be, we're not about new to the world, we're not about invention. Right? It's about how do we introduce things that are new either to the industry maybe or new to our customers or even new to our, the bank and the way we do things. Um, and it's a lot more than just having a great idea. Right? If you can't execute on it, if you can't make it real, then to us that's not innovation. That's just you, know, you got a great idea and that's worth you know, as much as the paper you've probably put it on. Um, it's nothing until you've actually made that idea real. And uh, that's something that we really keep in mind. So, you know, why does a bank have an innovation team? Why does a bank bother caring about innovation, right? Um, something that we, I get asked a lot. Really, it's, we look at, to f at four things, right? One is we think that if you're not innovative, if you're a company that just sort of continues on your normal growth pattern, then you're just going to keep going like this. If you really want to become, you know, keep growing the business, you've got to find a way to jump that curve. And innovation is one of the ways that you do that, right? It's doing something differently than all the rest of your competitors so that you actually grow your business. Um, obviously, it's got to be client value behind it or else there's just no point to it. Um, 
and strategic agility is one of those things that's really important, right? We need to be able to respond to impacts in the market, right? We need to know what's going on. We need to know what other people are doing in other industries and figure out ways to react to it. So when people say, like, you know, why bother? Why is that important? I always throw out the example of PayPal, right? I mean, here's, a, here's something that's completely disruptive and not one bank got it right, okay? Not one bank said, hey, you know what, that PayPal thing, we should just go buy them today so that we can be the currency on the internet for, the way a lot, you know, for how a lot of things get paid in a different kind of way. No bank said it, that's why it's owned by eBay and not by a bank today. So I always think that's a great example because no one got, none of the banks got it right. Um, and I mean, it attracts and develops talent. Like, do you want to work for a company that just puts you in your little box and makes you work within it? Or do you want to have a company that actually, work at a company that actually encourages you to be innovative and try do new things within the way that you do your job, right? So it's not, again, about going out and saying, you know, even though I do this, I'm going to go work on these other 500 things. It's about saying, how can I be innovative in just the way I do my day-to-day -day job? How can I be innovative um, within the context of my role? And how can I contribute to broader innovation across the organization? We encourage people to, to take innovation as a behavior, right? And, and that's really important. So if you're at the front line, let's say you're a, a teller at the front line, we may not, you know, you don't have complete discretion in how you, run, how you do your day job, right? But what we do want you to do is we want you to be innovative in how you approach your job. We want you to be innovative in how I say hello to you. We want you to be innovative. I mean, again, whatever works for you. And that's really important because innovation, you are, it doesn't have to be always a big bang. It's a simple, it can be as simple as how do I do my job today better, smarter, faster, cheaper, whatever it is than I did yesterday. And what we want to encourage is that innovative mindset. So I, I like this. I don't know if you've seen this before, the innovation pyramid, right? But there's different forms of innovation. Um, so incremental really is just about improving the business. That's my favorite example of one, the upside down ketchup bottle, right? I mean, think about it, that as an incremental innovation. All they did was take the ketchup bottle and turn it upside down so that it's actually easier to get the ketchup out of the bottle, right? Like, sounds like a no-brainer, but it took how many years to get you there, right? Great, well, my favorite example of an incremental innovation. You know, changing the business, um, you know, again, mobile is another good example, as a good example of that, right? So, yeah, it's just the next evolution for how you interact with us. And I'll talk a bit about some of the things that we've done in the mobile space. Um, and then the, trans the transformational stuff is really interesting, right? What are the things that change in industry? Um, so I, I took my kids to, um, we were at uh, Niagara Falls last year, and my camera broke before we went on the Maid of the Mist, right? So we had to go buy one of those, um, you know, disposable cameras. And my, my, at the time, he was four, my four-year-old couldn't figure out, what do you mean I can't see the picture right after? Right? What do you mean I can't keep snapping the picture like every time? It's like, no, you can't because I only have 18 pictures. He, he didn't understand that. That didn't make sense to him. Right? Because he's only had a digital camera where I don't mind handing it to him and letting go. Because there's no marginal cost to film. There's no marginal cost to anything. Kodak missed that boat. Right? Kodak missed that boat and their industries and they've suffered for it. You know, I put the iPod up there, right? Because they obviously, I don't mean from an iPod, but from the change in music and the movement to digital, you know, even the, the, music, the music companies are still just, they haven't figured it out yet, even to today. So we, as a team, we really try, and, and as a company, we try to work across all three of those types of innovation, right? We don't want to say, no, if it's not transformational, it's not good enough. We really try and say, no, you know what? You have to have a portfolio. So a lot of our innovation is just really simple. How do we do our jobs better every day? How do we improve the customer experience and the way we do you know, across the board? We do a lot of stuff in the evolutionary. What's the next evolution of where we're going to go? And mobile is a great example. And then we try and find what are one or two of those cool key transformational ones that really is going to redefine the financial services industry. How do we start to understand them? How do we start to monitor them and start to uh, participate in them? Yeah, if you have any questions at any time, just feel free to jive, jump in. So I'm happy to make it as interactive as you want. Let's see. Oops, sorry. Sorry, the mouse is not there. There we go. So I'll tell you a bit about what we do. So our team's called the Applied Innovation Team. We've really got three key mandates. The first is we run the innovation program for the enterprise. Okay. What 
What do we do? What are the key infrastructure things that we can put in place to make it easy for people in the organization who want to be innovative to be innovative? How can we help support them in their activities? How can we support them by seed funding them? How can we support them by giving their ideas a voice? Um, we're, we're there to help provide some of that infrastructure layer that makes it easy for groups or individuals who want to be innovative to be innovative. We also provide an important thought leadership role. Our job is to help the organization look ahead into the future. What's it going to look like in a year? How are we going to work differently tomorrow than we did today? How are we going to, for example, use social networking within the enterprise as the way to drive our business forward, right? How are we going to use that as the new form of collaboration? Because that's how we might work tomorrow differently than we do today, where I meet with somebody every 10 minutes, or I've got to pick up the phone to hunt people down, right? So, those are the kind of things, what, what's the future look like and how do we, and then third, we're not a think tank, right? We need to actually figure out now how do we execute? How do we try things today? How do we test? How do we run pilots, proof of concepts? How do we look at um, some of these new concepts and um, test them now so that we can, let's say it's three years out there into the future. If we do something today in the next, if we do something today, if we run a pilot over the next 30 days and learn about it, if we then seed fund the next bit to learn a bit more, how can we then roll it out to production in the next 18 months so we're a year or two ahead of the competition because we've done a lot of that seeding of the concept from an execution side instead of waiting for it to hit us in the face. Um, so we're always looking at really what's that next new thing and figuring out how do we bring that feature closer by doing something about today. We have an enterprise mandate. Our team works across the entire RBC organization from capital markets to insurance to retail banking to commercial banking. Uh, you name it, our team actually works, supports the entire RBC enterprise as well as of course the CEO office and the technology world as well. Um, our team's also going to be taking over groups like the technology strategy for the enterprise and helping them um, tie it closer to the business strategy. So this is important. I mean, the truth is it's hard to find the right team members. I, you know, every once in a while I'm recruiting for new folks for my team. You know, we're really looking for different kinds of things. I think we're looking for people who are both creative but also can execute, right? So having a great idea is not enough. You've got to have a way to manage that through to completion. You know, we're looking for people who, have, who are intellectually curious, right? And that's really important. Like my team reads, you know, I don't, I don't, I'm, I'm going to say my team probably across the board reads, I don't know, on average, 100 plus blogs in a given couple of days, right? That's probably what their coverage is, if not more, because they need to stay current on topics across everything from finance, the future of financial services to what does mobile mean? Where's the world going? You've got to be able to stay on the pulse of that. So I really, we really try to make sure that there's a drive to be intellectually curious and be interested in the way the world's going. I always, my typical interview question, right? So I, I always ask people when they come in, um, you know, you do go through your typical interview type things. And my always, my question is, so what do you think is interesting? If you're looking ahead, what's interesting to you that you think um, you, if, let me try again. You come in day one and I have nothing for you to work on, right? And I say, you know, why don't you go investigate or look into something that you're really interested in or that you want to go learn more about? What would that thing be? Right? That's my interview question. That's one of my key ones that almost is the make or break one for people whether they get hired or not. Right? If they say, if they can't answer that, to me they're not intellectually curious. Right? They're not actually thinking about things. So, you know, that person's usually out the door pretty quick after that question. Um, you know, that willingness to listen and to argue, and you kind of got to do both, right? My team debates a lot. We argue a lot amongst ourselves. We debate and discuss, right? You've got to be willing to sort of state your mind and stick and debate it, but also listen to what other people are saying. Um, you know, this is really important. You know, the tireless, the thick skin is really important. We get told no a lot. And I'll talk to you about one of the big projects around mobile uh, payments that, that my team helped incubate. Um, it took two years to get to the point where someone gave a crap. It took about a year to get, for someone to care the first round. It took another year to get it to the next level. At any t point in that time, and this was me who was running that, I could have just said, you know what? Eh. You know what? They told me no. They're not interested right now. I'm done. And I'm going to go move on to something else. 
But I believe that that's important. I believe it's important to the future of the bank. I believe it's important to the future of financial services. And we need to be at the forefront of it. So I, be I believed in it, and I kept pushing forward even when people were telling me no. You know, that's one of the key things that we think that's really important for innovation. Um, and that, for us, it's low desire for personal glory. The truth is, um, we're there to help get stuff started. We're there to help seed it. We're there to help get businesses to get interested in it. But when they actually roll it out to market, we're long forgotten. And you know what? That's OK with me. You know, if I want my picture up on the billboard and said, hey, Avi did this. That's great. This is, this, I'm probably in the wrong job. Um, now, the truth is a lot of people who are, you know, who, are there, who are there know what we've done and they know how we've contributed, which is why we still have a job and why our team continues to grow. But, the, but in terms of actually getting credit for taking something to market, we don't get that at the end of the day. And people working my team have to be OK with that. So we also really look for a diverse mix of people. I mean, it's really important, right? We're trying to find people who have all sorts of backgrounds, all sorts of skills, all sorts of interests. Um, and I'm trying to fill gaps. I've got people who have been at the bank forever. So one of the guys from my team has been at the bank for 30 years. He just got his 30 year, I don't know, 30 year. He got a 30 year, he gets some kind of present of some sort. Um, and then we have people who are new and, and come from a different perspective and really who are new grads. And sorry, having that, uh, having that balance is really important because I need people who know how to get stuff done, right? I need people who know how to get stuff done, and those people have been around the bank for a long time. And I need people who have good, new, fresh ideas who come from a different demographic, potentially. And putting those people together is actually how we get stuff out the other door because our success is measured by getting something into production. So, We also, we look at innovation just like we looked at it across the, uh, we look at it as a funnel. So we always start off with a lot of ideas, right? The more ideas, the better. The more concepts we have to start with, but they don't all get through. Only a very few get through. So our, what we have to be really good at is looking at a lot of different ideas, looking at a lot of different concepts, saying no, 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 yes, 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 no, 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 in order to get to the next level of ones that we actually want to spend our time on. Right? And then we have to look at it as a funnel that the, you know, we get fewer and fewer as we go, and we spend our time where we think we're going to get the most um, bang for the buck, and we're going to get the most take up from a business partner. I don't usually wear a tie either, but, or a suit. Um, so the way we look for that next idea, um, we spend a lot of time looking at what are the big challenges of the business going forward? What are the challenges for our enterprise, right? So when you talk about, I mentioned the one before, right? How are we going to work differently tomorrow than we do today? Collaboration is going to be key to that. How do we put in place the collaboration infrastructure to drive a different kind of business, right? That's something that's really key for us as a feature of our talent. We've got a lot of people retiring. How do we capture their knowledge and get it um, through some form of collaboration, get that knowledge syndicated to the next generation of people who are coming in? Um, we take some of those enterprise challenges and we always look at what are the external trends, right? What's being done in other industries? What's eyes on, okay, if I'm interested in mobile payments, I follow a lot of key things that are being done all around the world on the topic of mobile payments, right? And then we need to figure out how do we try some of those things, right? So I'll get a lot of different devices like you guys have up there, and I'll try things. I'm going to go load it into the phone, and I'm going to actually try and test it with a real bank account and see how does it really work. Or I'll try and get at least a demo of something that may be you know, in a different geography. Um, and then we need to figure out really what does that mean for us and how do we put it into our own context. Sorry, what do you mean that by that? That that man it. If you look at something that's not directly relevant to our PC, how do you help them grow and build the idea? Well, they have to ultimately have some kind of application, but um, but we 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 look at a lot of things that may not have an immediate implication, and some of those we'll just we'll continue to monitor them. So we keep it. For example, our team keeps a pretty extensive. Uh, we use a wiki. Uh, a wiki platform, and we keep a pretty extensive, you know, if you've seen something interesting, you've got to either A, 
um, bookmark it, you know, use a social bookmarking functionality and tag it, right? Or B, you've got to create an abstract around it and tag that. That says, here's what's interesting, here's why, I th you know, here's what it is, here's why I think it's interesting, and here's a link to it. So we're trying to build our knowledge base of, and it, of interesting things, and then we say, what does it really mean for us at the end of the day? So we track across a lot of different areas. And our coverage of, like I said, it's probably, I don't know, we read hundreds of research papers in a given week. We probably read, I'm going to say at this point in time, we, we've, we've submitted using the abstracts, so saying, you know what, I found something interesting, I'm going to document it, I'm going to say why it's interesting to the bank, and I'm going to tag it. Um, we've done, we, we do about two or three hundred of those a month among the ten of us in the team. Okay? And this isn't their, day, this isn't their main job. This is just, hey, you read a lot of stuff, we need to get value from it, so this makes it easier for me. I don't have to read everything. I read, I just, I just RSS, get an RSS feed of what everyone else is doing and what I do, and then we all read each other's, and that's how we stay current on everything. So yeah, so we use RSS, we use blogs, um, you know, in order to stay current on things, and like I said, we track a lot of information. Um, where possible, where it makes sense, we join the conversation. So we participate in a lot of discussion forums in a lot of different places. Um, so we don't just sort of read the blogs, but where, where it makes sense, we'll get engaged in the conversation, some of the social networks. So LinkedIn's got a lot of great uh, groups that, for different things. So, you know, I belong to some of these around front end of innovation, another innovation one, a couple around m-commerce and mobile payments, another around mobile. All right, those are some of the groups that I belong to whenever I put this deck together. Because, you know, again, well, there's no monopoly on good ideas. So, I mean, we're, by no means does our team, first of all, own innovation. Do we think we have the greatest ideas since sliced bread, right? Our job is to find where those great ideas are and figure out how, what they mean for us and how to execute on them or help our businesses execute on them. And like I said, I, we also blog. So everyone from my team has a blog on a different topic. So we all have different subject matter. So this, you know, this guy does... Uh, he does different kinds of payments. This is his uh, payment blog. Uh, former Waterloo guy, um, MBET student. Um, he does social networking. Someone else did uh, social media. Another one does collaboration. Right? We all have different topics that we track, and we have to blog about them. And these are available to the enterprise. Okay? Anyone from the bank who wants to read these, it's publicly available within the bank. Right? So not public, but within the bank. Although we are starting to, I'll talk about that in a minute, but we are starting to do other things that are outside. We also run, we have an idea management system, right? Um, so what we do is we'll put out an idea out to a community of people across the bank. You know, anything from, anything micro like how do we improve cash handling in a branch out to branch, front, front line branch people to how do we collaborate better in a social network, right? Whatever that question may be, we'll put it out to a large community of people across the bank, usually from across all the lines of business, um, and then we'll ask them for contribute your idea, right? What's your solution? And the community can rate and rank people's ideas. You can sort of thumbs up or thumbs down them. You can comment on them. You can join them together. Um, people have profiles, and you get points based on your contribution. Um, and we run this idea management program. We're about six months into our full launch on it. We launched in October. So four and a half months in, although we've done a bunch of pilots up till now. Um, in the four and a half months, about 1,800 RBC employees have participated in an idea session and contributed in an idea. Okay? And these are around bu key business problems that someone sponsored. So these aren't just ideas where they're saying, hey, give us a great idea. This isn't an open suggestion box, right? What it is is a business saying, I've got a challenge. Help me solve it. And then they've committed to actually saying, you know what, we're going to actually do something with these ideas. Yeah. What's sort of the signal to noise? Like, how much of it is crap? Very little. Because you've asked them a focused question, right? So we used to have a suggestion box program, right? Which was just a submit your innovative idea, right? And this was, uh, this was a bit before my... This was just... It, they shut it down just as I came into the bank, as a matter of fact. Um, the problem with that is, yeah, it's all noise. Because you can't... 
there's no one to evaluate it in a real business context. So you're going to give me a comment, that, you're going to give me a submission that says, hey, if you, know, if you move the comma to the left on the form, that would be really helpful to me in the branch, right? And you're going to give me an idea that says, hey, you know, if we really transform the way we did X, Y, Z, then dot, 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 dot. And how do I compare those two as, you know, someone who's just managing a suggestion box, right? So that program's dead because you can't do anything with that at the end of the day. This is, hey, we've got this real challenge, right? Um, help us solve it. So it's already got a built-in owner who's actually going to read all the ideas. You've got interested people submitting ideas. And the community is also doing a bit of self-moderating. So they're doing a little, hey, that would be a great idea, but dot, 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 dot. Um, we've also had a lot of great participation from like an executive who sponsors this thing, right? So it's not just like, you know, hey, it would be cool if, right? Um, we ran one, you know, one of the executive vice presidents in the bank who was sponsoring this, he participated. You know, he'd say, hey, yeah, Bill, that was a great idea. Have you thought about doing it this way? Like, he would actually actively participate in the community. And they're for finite time frames. They run for anywhere from, you know, three days to two, three weeks. Um, and then they're closed. So it's not an open-ended process either. At the end of that three weeks, there is a team who is responsible for actually evaluating all those ideas and doing something with them. And they do. Yeah. So would a typical question be? Like, I assume it wouldn't be, how do we get better? Like, it would be more... Yeah, so I mean, I, I wasn't kidding. How do we improve cash handling in the branch was actually a question that they asked for people who are on the front line who deal with cash in the branch. And one of them said, hey, you know, it'd be really great. One of the comments that came back was, you know, um, there used to be this dispensing machine that did X, Y, Z, and it's not doing it. Basically, all they had to do was walk over and turn this machine on because no one actually remembered why they turned it off. Look, problem solved. Like, that was one of the suggestions. So some of them they could act on right away. Um, another a question would be um, one, of the, one of the departments, one of the big areas is launching their new blueprint, basically, for how they're going to run their world differently. Um, so it's a big transformative initiative for their, for their organization. So the question was, how do we maintain employee engagement during this time of change? So, and they went out to a broad group. So this wasn't going out to executives only, or just, this was going against like frontline, middle office, back office, the entire shebang, just to say like, we're interested in your ideas. Give them to us and you know, help share your ideas. And people want to contribute, right? I mean, people, people work there. They want to make their place better. They want to contribute. Even, there isn't even anything necessarily in it for them. Like it's not, there isn't necessarily a monetary prize associated with it. It's just people want to contribute because that's what they like to do. So I sort of have a two questions. So it seems that the focus of this more is on idea generation. So is the sort of hypothesis that a, a mass crowd can generate a better single idea than an expert in that topic? Um, it's, it's, it's not just that. It's, it's actually more that by reaching out more broadly into the enterprise, we'll be able to touch more people who have skin in the game than we can by bringing the same 12 people we always do into a meeting room to do it, right? Mm -hmm. So by actually being able to, in a distributed way, right, and in an asynchronous way, reach out to people who are frontline staff, that's, that's something different than, you know, those are people who don't get invited, like, they're not invited necessarily, they don't come to head office to share their perspectives in a brainstorm session where you can only have it with 15 or 20 people. This is really a way to reach out to some of the people who are the experts, but, but a head office might not know they're the experts, you know what I mean? So then, this seems very applicable to somewhere like a bank where there's a lot of, like, replicated job roles, like, sort of the whole structure is, you know, there's a branch and there's many branches and within a branch there's this and play and you had that employee at every single branch. Would you see something like this working in like a high tech company? Oh, it's used in lots of high tech companies. Oh, yeah. So I mean, any, well, it's not. It's it. like only like one person working on like chip X that does like function Y, Z, right? Yeah, that's probably not the kind of question they're going to ask. I mean, they're gonna, there are lots of challenges that are cross enterprise. IBM does tons of these, right? Mm -hmm. And they do it with their customers too. Like their customers get invited to participate as well. Um, Do you know how, is, is it different at IBM Well, they're using a different platform, but other than that, it's, it's a different, their model's slightly different, it's a little more discussion form-ish, but it is different. Um, but there's lots of high-tech companies who do this. Um, any organization that has challenges in the organization, this is a good way, the key is to, you want to reach out as broadly as possible, to as many people as possible, who may have expertise that isn't, that is outside of even their job today, right? So that's the other problem, right, is that people in the bank move around a lot, 
every couple of years someone's in a new gig. Like I'm an exception as someone who's been in the same department, although I've moved up in the department, I've done more things in it. Um, you know, people, um, people move around and just because you've moved into another, you know, just because my new title would be, hey, I'm involved with credit, doesn't mean that my old job working in, you know, with the next generation customer is lost, right? Like, how do you still tap into those people who know a lot, but it's not in their core job role today? So that's a part of it as well. Like, expertise lives everywhere. And how do you evaluate the ideas? Sorry? How do you evaluate the ideas? Cause well, the, cause well, the sponsor of the question. Like, whoever owns that question, whoever's put that out there, one of the things they've done is they've committed to actually doing something with it, those answers. So we haven't run one yet where they, we don't run them because someone wants to say, wouldn't it be great if? We're really running these to say, someone's got a pressing problem they need to solve. They want to reach out to a lot of people to solve it. And they're going to do something. They've committed to the community that they are going to evaluate these, the top ideas, and they're going to do something with them. And they do. So that's one of the ways we tap into questions and ideas internally. We look outside, but I don't know if we run the next great innovator competition, so we, this is for university students. Our third year one, we have a Waterloo, uh, Waterloo uh, team this year in the finals. I think we've had one for the last three years, actually. And what we do is we go out to students and we ask them a question. So the first year's question was, sorry, the first year's questions was, how will today's teens change the future of financial services? Give us your innovative idea. Okay. Um, this year's one, which we're just going to the finals, we just announced our finalists, uh, nextgreatinnovator.com if you want to see some of them. Um, it's an innovative concept or product or process from another, geo another industry or region that could be applied to Canadian financial services. Give us your great innovative idea. Okay? And um, it's a $20,000 prize for the winning team. They get brought to Toronto, wined and dines, you know, meet the CEO, present to this year's panel of executive judges are probably you know, six of the top executives across the banks from all sorts of areas. So our head of venture cap, you know, it's our head of venture capital this year, our CFO, CAO, our head of, you know, our head of um, our service delivery. It's, we've got like a pretty, this year's panel is unbelievable. Our head of marketing for the bank. Um, anyway, so they come, they give us their ideas, we evaluate them, the top five come to Toronto, they win prizes and off we go. That's how we reach out to outside of uh, the bank. So it's a team of MBET students, right? It's a team of MBET students this year, yeah. And I think it was the last two years too. It's actually an assignment in one of their classes, which they then can submit if they want, right? So it's an assignment that they actually answer this question, and then if they want to submit to us, they can. Um, so this is run out of my team. It's kind of fun. I mean, it's a kind of fun competition. It's not a marketing competition for us. We actually do something with the ideas. So the first year's competition, the first year's winner, I think I talk about it later, but the first year's winner was, um, came from the idea that, you know what? Students don't want to talk to other students about financial matters. Sorry, students don't want to talk to people who look like their parents about financial matters, right? They're not going to walk into a branch and feel comfortable. They want to talk to, they want to hear, get advice from other students who actually know what they're experiencing, right? So their idea was, and the way we took it forward was we recruited six student bloggers from across Canada to blog to students about financial matters. And if you look at the blog, like these were not sort of your typical bank says kind of blogs. These were like truly written in a, yeah, you know, I'm kind of pissed off about my cell phone bill. Here's what I'm doing to cut back on it, right? Things like that. So how do I save money? How do I start a business? Um, that, that, that was the first year's winner and one of the winning teams and we actually put it into market. So this isn't just a hobby, we're actually putting, and last year's one's in pilot right now. Last year's winner's in pilot in my lab right now. And this year we'll see, I, I have no doubt this year one's gonna move pretty fast too, whoever the winner's gonna be. And if you can see, we also, I'm gonna talk about it in a minute, but we also, let's if I can get back here. No. No. There we go. Let me just, uh, I just wanna show you. Come on. No. Nope. Crap. I'm doing it. I'm using the scroll wheel. So we also use the, I'm going to talk about it in a bit, but we also use the innovator competition as a way to try new technology and test new things. This is actually the poster from this year. You can see in the top right there's a QR code, which will take you to the mobile version of the website. 
right? So one of the ways that we, it also has a, a text at the bottom, like you can text Innovator and it'll take you to our mobile website. Okay, so we're trying some of the new, some things that we want to do in a marketing perspective, but we're using this as a way to try it out. We have a lab, right? One of the biggest challenges with doing anything new is you need a place to do it. So I've got dedicated machines, I've got dedicated infrastructure, I've got dedicated uh, funding, I've got some seed funding, and I've got some dedicated technical people in order to run pilots and proof of concepts. Okay, so when someone has an idea, I don't have to pretend I don't have to say, I don't have to talk about it in the hypothetical. I can actually do demos. I can actually show them things, right? That's really important for getting a, something accepted and moved along. Um, so kind of fun. This is new. We start, this is something I started about, uh, I launched about three years ago. We've got an RBC beta site, right? So we try new things. How do we put it out to the bank? Like we want feedback. We're all clients, right? You want to you get paid at RBC, you, get, you know, everyone has a bank account. And um, as clients, we all have, we all actually ha can provide feedback to a pilot or a test idea. So we have a site, an RBC beta site, where we put stuff out there and get feedback from people who want to give us a, give us their feedback on whatever concept we were testing. So kind of cool. Um, so I mentioned our innovator competition, kind of fun. So, oops. So we were the first bank, we were the first Canadian bank to have a public facing blog and we did it in the innovator competition, right? Because we look at this as a pretty low risk way to try things. So we were the first bank to have a public facing blog in Canada. Um, we use it for the innovator competition. We're Twittering this year. So RBC Innovator on Twitter um, and we're Twittering not just about the competition but we're also Twittering about cool, interesting, innovative things that we see, right? Kind of neat, just something we want to experiment with, right? How does this work as a communication vehicle for us? Um, you know, we do some Google Maps stuff, we got some video, we've got the interactive host who walks on screen and says, hi, my name is, right? That's, that's kind of neat. We're trying different stuff. You know, again, we're testing different things and seeing what we like and what we don't. Uh, we do SMS alerts, social bookmarking. Um, we let teams create profiles for their team to promote themselves. Um, one of the thing, cool things that we do is we run our own version of Innovator Idol. So peer voting. So what we do is um, our Innovation Council, which I'll talk about in a minute, chooses the top four uh, of the five finalists, okay? So we get it down to 15, they choose four, and then we have five peer voting finalists. And we put them out on the web and we let anyone vote for which of the five they like the best to get the fifth slot. So this year, last, you know, we tried, started this last year, we got about 6,000 votes in a week or eight or nine days, so that was pretty good. Uh, this year we got close to 30,000, although once we got rid of some of the scam votes, right, there are a lot of uh, people trying to game the system. Once we got rid of them, we got down to a much more manageable number. Uh, but probably like close, but we still have about 20,000 people vote for the team that they like the best, which is kind of neat. So we let them choose, we let the public choose their finalists, their fifth finalists, and we watch how some of the teams promote themselves. So some of them, like, will um, go on their, send out to all their Facebook friends, hey, I'm a finalist in this, go vote for me, right? Some of them promote in different ways. So one of the te finalist teams this year went on a lot of public blogs that spoke to their idea and got some support and got people from around the world voting for their idea. So that was kind of cool. Now, I mean, I will say, though, that the wisdom of crowds doesn't always work. So, you know, I won't say that they necessarily always choose my personal favorite, which doesn't mean it's a bad one. It's just not my personal favorite. You know, we get, we do, we've been doing, we did some stuff with avatars. Right? Something else we've been playing with around um, from a customer service side. So this, this is one that may, that's May telling you how to pay your bills. Right? So if you go in certain places on the RBC online banking site, um, behind the wall and in front on how to use the uh, e-statements, how to sign up for an e-statement, um, she, she goes and does the, hi, my name is May, and, that, 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 and walks you through it. So kind of fun. So we did a pilot around this first and then it got rolled out to our website. Um, mobile is an area I'm near and dear to my heart. So some of the things that we've been doing in the mobile space, um, first of all, we have a mobile version of our banking site. So rbc.mobi, if you go there, you can actually do your banking, your online banking, your banking basically through your mobile phone. So it's just a slimmed down version of our online banking. Um, 
it's pretty cool. It's pretty fast. It's lightweight. Yeah. What sort of traffic have you seen to it? Uh, it's not, you know, the people who are using it use it a lot. We've, we haven't done that much promotion to it, but it's, it's not bad. I mean, it's not like our online banking, but it's, you know, it's, it's, it's growing. What, and the people who use it use it a lot. Sorry? What does the growth look like? Um, it, it's steady. I don't know. It's steady. Uh, you know, what's really interesting is really the, the way that people are using it. They use it a lot. Like if you, you know, some people use it and they pay their bills and they, they um, check their balances frequently and all sorts of other things. So, so it's kind of neat. But it doesn't give you full functionality. Of course, it's a slimmed down version appropriate for mobile, which is what mobile should be, right? Um, this is the, uh, we're doing a pilot right now. It's been announced with Rogers for Visa pay, to do a pay wave. So it's a chip that will be built into your phone, wave and pay at contactless terminal. So we're doing this pilot. It's Aston Rogers and Visa. Um, the first round of that testing was done in my lab. The second round is going out with is going out with internal staff. We're going to do uh, you know a number of phones. So the chips baked into the phone, um, and then we're going out to I think about 500 customers is the third stage to actually get these phones with the chip baked in and be able to add anywhere where they do contactless wave and pay to be able to use their phone as that payment device with their credit card. So kind of cool. Um, the other thing that we've done is we just la we launched a, pop, a pilot, um, for RBC Mobex. It just concluded, or it's just concluding, which basically lets you um, SMS people money. Okay, so I can sign up. You don't have to be an RBC customer. It's open. It was open to anybody. It was an employee pilot, but it was open to anyone really. Um, and we did it for six months, and it was very successful. We're just finish. We just finishing it up, and then we're going to evaluate. Basically, what it lets you do is it lets you um, sign up. Um, load money into an account from any bank, Canadian bank account, or from your Visa card, and then lets you SMS whoever you want money. So if I send you money right now, it doesn't it, we, because it's shut down. I can't add people anymore, but I would have it, when I, in the, past, the last while when I've been doing these, I've been SMSing people money. But I would just be, do basically pay whatever your phone number is five. So I don't need to know anything about you. I don't care who your carrier is. I don't care because it's SMS, right? I don't care who your bank is as long as you have a you know I, a phone and a bank account to take the money out to, I can send you money. So it's got the viral growth in. So even if you're not registered, you can register after the fact. So I'll send you money, go register, and then you've got your own mobile payment system. So we're, we've looked at this as a, we think this is important. Again, if you're looking at what the future looks like, um, you know, the idea that um, how are you going to be taking cash out of the system? This isn't going to be the kind of thing you necessarily use at a, when you're standing in line at a store. That's silly, right? It's not that hard to pull your card out of your pocket. It's really, I just lost 20 bucks to you at poker, or I split my lunch money. I split lunch with you, excuse me. I split lunch with you, or I have to pay the babysitter or the snow guy or whatever it is. Anywhere where you use checks or cash, garage sale, flea markets, you name it, right? So how do we take cash out of that system? Um, we also did one of the, uh, we did a part of the pilot was also um, using a poster with a code on it to buy a book, right? So to test the idea that, you know what, like how do I, we, you know, if you're a bookseller and you, um, you know, you see a lot of ads for that book or for that, you know, or for HMV ad or something, right? How do you make that ad actionable? So I don't have to go online or go to the store. I can just SMS, pay 25 to that, sh to that code, and that book will be shipped to my house because I have your address. So again, future, where's the world going? This is the kind of stuff that we follow. So this is something that got started with us and my team, got incubated. The idea got incubated for a while. What does it really mean? How do we take advantage of it? What's our strategy? got seed funded by, we have an innovation council, which is a group of cross enterprise, all of the senior executives from all of our lines of business, um, who basically are there to help drive innovation across the bank. We meet monthly. It's chaired by my boss and it's, and it's run by, the, I manage the council. I run the day to day of the council. And um, they, um, they seed funded the first round of this. So they provide some of the funding to figure out really what does it mean? How are we gonna do it? Let's build some prototypes. And then we took it to market. And now it's just a question. We've run it through. We're going to figure out what did we learn from it. Right? We want to stop what worked, what didn't work. So registration was sucky. Right? We need to fix that. Um, the functionality was really easy. 
Like it worked, right? And a lot of people, once they were signed up, loved it. So we've got to figure out where do we go from here. So we're going to stop, pause, and decide. Um, but that's sort of the innovation process. Seed funds, incubate the idea, seed fund it, learn a lot, learn some more, and then make a good informed decision whether to do something. So, yeah, did you have a question? Sir? Um, I was just wondering, how do you feel like community around this and getting people to process this information? Well, so that's a good question. Um, so we, the way this was set up was um, one of two, you had two choices. Either um, under, for, what I did is for me, um, under 25 bucks, it just went through. Over 25 bucks, you had to use a pin. It would call you back. So I would SMS you money. It would do a phone call back to me. So my phone would ring, and then I would enter a pin, and then it would approve the transaction, right? So, so it's an out-of-band call. So even if I've lost my device, it doesn't matter because you still have to have a pin in your head, right? So you need the device, something you have, and something you know, right? So you could turn it on, though, that even under $25, you could get a pin call back. That was up to you. Um, we also limited for the pilot only up to 100 bucks. So this was for low value transactions. So, you know, low value, under 100 bucks, 500 bucks a month. Like it was, we limited the risk that way. We didn't get too many complaints about security. There was no issues. There was no fraud in the time we ran it. And it wasn't just RBC employees, right? Because if it was just, so we ran a pilot, it was friends and family and employees, right? Because if I could only send you money if you're an employee, well, I don't send employees that much money, right? Right. I need to be able to pay, pay my poker debt to my buddies with uh, you know the money in that way, right? So, but that was one of the things that we were testing for security, right? And acceptance of the security issues with it. So mobile is something we follow. Um, RBC P to P that was the student bloggers that I mentioned. So again, something else we were trying out in the world. Uh, we have a site on Facebook where we you know let students. We use it a lot for recruitment and to promote some of our campus banking uh, things. Uh, we're, do, we're start, you know, like I said, we're Twittering, we're doing other interesting things. Again, how do we start to engage in different ways? We're also, of course, using the same kind of principles internally for how we work, right? What does Twitter in the enterprise look like, right? So how do we create groups within the enterprise to, to, to communicate that way, right? How do we start to use communities in an enterprise around topics of all sorts of things. How do we use profiles about people to locate what they know and locate their expertise, right? These are, th I mean, this is about the way you're going to work differently tomorrow than you do today. And that's something we need to be on top of. We spent a lot of time looking, you know, widgets and gadgets and trying to figure out again, how does, you know, that to us is the future. So anything that we look at, we want to make sure that you're going to be able to stick other things in in the future. So we're trying to think, hey, if this is what it looks like today, right? you know, where it's on the web or on your phones or on the desktop, right? So these are the obvious ones. Um, what does that mean for banking? What does that mean for how you engage with us? What does that mean for the way we deliver service to our customers and engage internally? And then we've, of course, got to think about where is it going, right? Where else are these things going to go? And what does that mean for your banking experience, if anything? It may never mean anything for your banking experience, but it may. And that's the kinds of things that we're trying to watch and investigate. I don't know if you guys have ever seen these things, the Surface computing devices, right? Have you seen these, right? So the cool Surface multi-touch table. Um, that's cool. So like this is good stuff. So we're trying to figure out like as a bank, our value prop, as RBC's value propositions around advice. How do we provide advice to our clients, right? And differentiate ourselves that way in the kinds of advice that we provide. To me, the way that we're able to do things, and we're playing a little bit with this around, how do we manage a financial plan? If I'm a financial planner and I'm sitting in front of you, how can we use this as a way to build your financial plan? Using multi-touch kinds of uh, multi-touch as well as um, you know, some of the interactive with pictures and with graphs and other kinds of fun things. So um, we're, we're doing a pilot around this as well right now. So I'm getting one of these for my, for my I'm going to replace the table in my office with one of these things. Um, one of the other ones that we've been looking at is, um, have you ever seen this, the telepresence, the Cisco telepresence stuff, which is the, sort of the high-end video conferencing things? So I've got one of those, not the big, there's a big table one. If you ever watch 24, that's what they use, right? But they also have a screen one that's, that's more of like a 36-inch one on a pedestal. So the question is, how do we use those to deliver advice to people, right? So um, 
to bring expertise that we don't have. So if you need wealth management expertise or financial planning and you're you know, in the oil sands in Alberta and we, there's no branches there, there's no infrastructure there, can we stick one of these there? It give you access to key experts wherever, you, wherever they are. That's one of the things we're experimenting with, right? So I've got, so I got one of those in my office as well right now just to test and play around with, so it's kind of cool. We were doing a lot, we're doing a bunch of things around virtual worlds, right? Again, how do we use them for collaboration? Um, we're doing some training with them. How do we use them to do training? Um, one of the other things that we're experimenting with is how do we use them to do um, simulations? So how do we build the bank of the future and design the bank of the future in a virtual world that then we can start to actually take into the real world? <coughs> so something else that we've been playing a lot with. And I think that's, you know. So just, you know, just some final things really. Um, you know, if you can sort of see, what, we're really about do, learn, do, right? So we're not going to go blow our brains out with a $2 million or $5 million investment in something that's not proven or not tried. We want to do something, we want to learn from it, and then we want to do some more and do it again and then do it better. So we keep learning. If you do it in an iterative way, I mean, it's that thing that says, you know what, I don't really know what it is, but I'll know it when I see it. I don't really know what I like, but I know I'll like it when I see it, right? So we want to be able to show people things so that they can say, yeah, I like that, let's keep going. Yes, I see there's business value in that. Keep going. Or we don't know what it is yet, but at least let's understand it by seeing it. So that's really important. It really is, in case you can't tell, this stuff doesn't happen by magic. There's a lot of work that goes into doing any of these things. Um, it requires a lot of support from the organization. I'll give RBC tons and tons of credit. I mean, I think we're probably the only, we're one of the, if not only, Canadian bank that has a team like ours. Yeah, I think there's one or two that have them a little more in some of the, they're sort of, um, we're the only one that's an enterprise team that works across all of the lines of business. And um, one of the things that we're starting to hear is that some of the banks in Europe who are shutting their innovation teams, um, for us, we just became more prominent in the organization. Our, we, just became up, we just became more important and we become an anchor for the CEO and his executive team and the rest of the enterprise. So, you know, having a lot of good successes is important, but it doesn't happen by magic. It really is a lot of work, and it's a lot of um, support from a lot of different people across the entire enterprise, including from the top. Um, that's really the most important, that don't starve tomorrow to feed today, right? So this is, this is the time right now where a lot of people are cutting back, right? You may have heard there's not a good economy out there. There's a bad economy out there right now. So you'll see companies cutting their innovation teams or cutting their innovation budget or cutting their focus on the future in order to save some money today. We're different, right? What we're saying is no. This is the time where you start to leapfrog people. When everyone else is cutting back, that's when you make some good bets, right? We don't want to let, you know, we don't want to uh, starve the future of the bank in order just to help today, right? We've got to keep making investments in our future. Um, it really is a team sport, right? We work with a lot of different people across the entire enterprise. I'm not in any shape or form um, married to the idea of, like, I, we work with a lot of people. The ideas come from everywhere, and I don't really care where they come from, frankly. I don't care whose ideas they are. We all work together to get them out the door. That's what's really important. Um, and we really do collaborate a lot. I, I like... Uh, this is it. Yeah, so this is just, I like that quote, right? This is one of my favorite quotes, right? Some people make things happen, some watch while things happen, and some just wonder what happened, right? And personally, I'd like to be the former, not the latter. So that's all I have, so. Questions? Any questions or anything? Yeah? Um, yes. I mean, sure, there's always resistance to change. Um, it, it's helped that we have support. Like, it's helped that we have top-down support in the organization. Um, there's, there's always people, who, there's a lot of people who have embraced us and who actually, like, want to do a lot of different things. So, I mean, there's people who always want to do new things. There's people who want to not do new things. Um, I spend a lot more time with people who want to do new things, right? So, I've got a limited team. So, my team is about 10 people. Um, we spend it with people who want to do things, not people who don't. So we sort of pick and choose a little that way. Um, and the truth is sometimes it's just, if we really believe in it, we sometimes just have to work out to change their minds. And we do. 
So there have been some things. So when I first started talking about mobile payments um, four years ago, right? When I started working on this four years ago, the concept of it, a lot of people didn't know, didn't get it. Like they didn't know why would you want to do this? What does this mean? What's this phone thing you keep of which you speak, right? Um, not quite that bad, but um, I did actually sit. I still remember one of the first meetings I had on the topic, and I had I don't know, called like eight senior executives from around the bank in the room, and. You know, one of them didn't know, like I used the word text message and they didn't know what a text message was, right? So there's part of it's not about, some of it's, it's not usually just generally about resistance to change. Sometimes it's just about we need to educate people, right? We need to bring them along the learning curve with us because this isn't the key things that they do. This is taking them outside of their business. It's taking them outside of the way they think sometimes. So we need to find ways to bring them along and educate them in a way that actually um, you know, again, it's not, if they're purely resistant, I can't do much about that, right? But most people aren't. Like, I, we haven't found too much of that. It's really more, people want to do things. They want to improve their business. They want to go, they want to take it to the next level, but they need to learn, they need to know something first. So we're there to help with that education process. So, so, so it's a different, it's not quite a typical bank kind of group that you would necessarily think. So, I mean, I don't know. I don't know if, looking at these things, I don't know if you think that these are sort of typical things that are looked at by an organization like ours. Hopefully they probably seem a little different than you might have thought a bank spends their time looking at. But we actually not only spend our time looking at them, but we have a lot of support to spend our time looking at them, and more importantly, to put them into market eventually. Right? So, I don't want to guess, but I'm going to say this, that surface stuff will make it into, into branches somewhere you know, in the next couple of years for sure, right? Mobile, you know, the extension of mobile, the expansion of mobile will make its way, you know, will continue to grow from where we've started it, right? Things like vir our use of virtual worlds and social networking even within the enterprise, um, you know, that's going to be core to the way that the bank is run and the way that internally people do their jobs and employees interact with each other. And we're not that far away. So... Getting started is always the hard part, but once you've started, you just got to keep keeping the balls rolling. There's actually it's, it's, it isn't as hard as you might think. Yeah. So I've got a team of about right now about ten, um, and it's a mix between um, people who are technical, who are actually you know helping to do the technical implementation associated with the project, um, and there are people who are more on the business side. Um, who understand technology but are really about helping to package the concept within whatever lines of business that they that they work within. Um, you know, if it's a spectrum, you know, I'm probably pretty close to smack in the middle between technology and business, sort of equally comfortable in, in each. Um, people on my team are across different areas of the spectrum. Um, but it's a broad team. It's a broad team with lots of different uh, expertise. I got I have two lawyer two people with law backgrounds, including myself. I've got engineers, so I've got uh, three people are engineers. I've got two MBA, you know, some business students or MBA types. Um, you know, again, some really technical, uh, technical people. Um, and I've got a couple of really good, strong entrepreneurs, people who've started and run and managed and created their own businesses. So I've really got a lot, a lot of different kind of skills in the bank, in the business, in the, as well as people who've always been at the bank for years. Uh, right, they're internal. Yeah, although a lot, of pe a lot. The truth is, a lot of people from my team have public-facing blogs too, from their own personal lives. But no, they're, the ones that they do for this is, is inside. Um, that being said, we are looking at just in the context of our innovation competition, we're looking at continuing to do some of this stuff outside. So our, we'll probably continue to Twitter about interesting things that we see on an ongoing basis, long after the competition this year is done. And there's one of the ones where I actually didn't ask a lot of permission to do this one. So this is some things I have to admit we, there are some places where we choose to um, ask for forgiveness rather than permission. And that's one of the ones that we have actually is just said, you know what, we're going to do it. And if someone complains loud enough, we'll hear about it and we'll shut it down. Um, but let's try it and see. So, you know, things like that, you know, doing Twitter in the enterprise. We're not, so it's not Twitter, but we're, we were bringing so micro blogging into the enterprise and we're running a few pilots. Again, something we're doing as sort of a little mini test without asking a lot of people. We did one actually a bit outside that was outside the firewall, um, which we didn't ask a lot of permission for. Now we're bringing it inside. So.
Oh. Right. Sure. Sure. Thanks for sure, no problem. Thanks. Thanks. Oh, thank you very much. Excellent. Thanks. I need one of these actually. Thank you.